Yo, what is up guys? It is Matthew Maz Fishing and I want to start this by saying welcome back to another video. I know it's been a hot minute since I've said that. You guys are probably wondering where I've been and honestly, 2021 was just a hectic year to say the least. If you know me well, you'll know that one thing that I really enjoy doing is uh, messing around with my own tackle, making baits, doing things a little bit different than the typical person does. So in this video guys, I'm going to show you how to make your own bait that you can use whether you're ice fishing or open water fishing for any of the lakes near you. Specifically, the bait I'm going to be making is designed for Lake Simcoe. If you guys have been following with the channel for a little bit, you'll know that last year I made my own bait that I call the Gobi Gummy. Not sure how well it's going to focus there guys, but that's what it looks like right there. That caught me so many fish. I caught a bunch of white fish, lake trout, even a Lake Simcoe walleye on this bait right here. And uh, the best thing about it is it's a bait I completely designed on my own. I poured it myself and uh, it caught me a lot of fish. So first things first, we're gonna walk you through a little bit of what you're going to need to actually start making and pouring your own baits. Uh, so first off, you're going to need a material to make the bait out of. Uh, I personally like to use clay. This is what I've been using for the past little while. It's worked pretty well for me. It's uh, a pretty basic polymer clay. I think it's super sculpy. You can find it at any craft store, anything like that, Michaels will have it. And uh, this is basically made for making little sculptures and things like that. So it works well for making baits. It's pretty easy to work with. You're also going to need something to actually make the molds out of. Uh, this is what I found to work for me. It's, uh, it's called Smooth On. And this one I believe is the Mold Star 15 Slow. So that's the specific model of it. You can find it on Amazon. It's roughly $50 or so. Uh, it's a two-part mixture that you do in 50-50, so it's, it's pretty easy to mix and pretty easy to use. Haven't had too many issues with air bubbles, and uh, it's worked well for me. Beyond that, you are also going to need Plastisol. Plastisol is the actual soft plastic that fishing baits are made out of. Uh, the one that I'm going to be using, I have both Lureworks and Dead On Plastics. Dead On Plastics is really cool stuff. Uh, they do a lot of YouTube stuff with World's Worth Fishing. If you check out his YouTube channel, you'll see some really cool bait making videos. Uh, I also use Lureworks, that's what I kind of started with and it worked well for me. I'm going to be using a soft uh, compound Plastisol because we are making very small baits. As you can see this one's only around 3 inches and the one we're going to make is probably going to be around the same. I just changed the camera angle a little bit. Step 1, take some tin foil. What you're going to do is just take some out and just lay it flat on your table. The reason we're gonna lay out some tin foil and make the bait on it is because once we sculpt the bait, you actually put the clay in the oven to bake it. Uh, and that's what actually allows it to harden up and that's when you actually pour the mold around it. So step two, we're gonna take our super sculpey here, open it up, you're gonna notice it's just a big block. I've used a fair chunk of this. You don't need too much to make a small bait. Um, I'm probably just gonna take like one of these little strips here and that will probably actually be enough. But from there, take the clay, just start mashing it around your hands. You want to basically warm it up and soften it a little bit. So I've warmed up the clay and all I've really done till this point is kind of rolled it out there. So you can see, I just rolled it out using my hands. Uh, from here, you're basically going to start shaping your bait. I'm going to make one that looks similar to a goby. So it's, it's going to be somewhat similar to the previous shape that I used for this bait, the goby gummy. Um, but we're going to try to change it around a little bit. I think I'm going to add a couple features, things like eyes and a mouth. And uh, we're gonna add a little bit more taper to the bait and a little bit wider of a tail and uh, probably a little bit taller. So we're gonna see what the profile looks like. I'm gonna work here for a little bit. I'm gonna cut to the next part when you can actually see the bait uh, being made. All right, so it's been probably about an hour or so. It took quite a long time to actually sculpt the bait, but this is what I've come up with so far. As you can see, it's got uh, a bit of a, a tall back on it that kind of tapers down. It's got a big head like a goby does, little fin detail on the side, it's got eyes, and a uh, little mouth on the front there. I don't know how well you can really see that. Camera doesn't generally focus too well that way, but hopefully you guys can see that. Um, from here, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way the shape looks, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop inside, we're gonna throw it in the oven. It says on here about 14 minutes per quarter inch, so we're probably gonna throw it in the oven for about, probably 14 minutes or so, at 275 degrees Fahrenheit.
we are back in the garage and as you can see, there is our bait. We've uh, baked it in the oven, so at this point, it's basically hard. It's no longer soft clay. I can't really shape it with my fingers. But the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some automotive sandpaper. This one's 3M, it's just from Canadian Tire. You can probably find it at any Walmart, Canadian Tire, something like that. And uh, this is 600 grit, it's a wet sandpaper. What we're going to do is we are actually going to wet sand this. And the reason why is it's gonna take off any sort of imperfections, any sort of small marks and nudges, our fingerprint, anything like that that we may have put on the bait to just smooth it out, polish it, and make it ultimately look nice and smooth. We just spent probably the past 25 minutes or so sanding this bad boy down. So from here, the next step is to build the actual container that our mold's going to sit in. So all you're gonna need, some sort of cardboard box, some scissors, and some tape. So what you will see now, guys, is this is what I've cut. It's basically a little box out of cardboard that we're going to tape up. So all these edges, we're just gonna fold up and basically make it into a box. Okay, from here, guys, we have our box kind of semi-taped together. Now we're gonna do what's arguably the hardest part of this whole process. We need to put glue on the bottom of this bait, not too much so that it doesn't come out the sides, and we need to place it right in the middle of this piece of cardboard here. So we're gonna use some Gorilla Glue, just some Gorilla Super Glue. This is what it looks like right now, guys. The bait is in there. It's just going to be drying on the bottom. We were a little bit forward, a little bit close to the nose of the bait as you can see, but that'll probably work. We're gonna let that dry and uh, tape it up and we'll be back in a little bit. So there you have it guys. This is essentially where we're going to pour our mold. The next part of this, what we're gonna do is we are going to take our smooth on, again, the Mold Star 15, this is the slow. I think it has like a four hour cure time. We're going to basically prepare our 50-50 uh, solution here of our silicone and uh, pour it in and let this sit overnight and cure. So our mold is poured. I just moved it over to my workbench over here. I uh, wanted to set it here because it's a little bit more flat. I want to make sure that it cures evenly. I'm gonna let that cure overnight and come back to it in the morning. So we will see you then. All right, guys, we are back. It's probably been about a week or so, a little bit longer than a day, um, but our mold's done. You can see there, everything's concrete. It's solid, it's not liquidy anymore. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this open. Hopefully the cardboard doesn't stick to the mold. Usually I cut them open like the next morning. It's, as I said, it's been probably about a week or so. So we're gonna chop that open, see how the mold looks. And there you have it guys. There is, let's try to get that to focus. There's our finished and completed mold. At this point, you're pretty much ready to start pouring baits. So this is the Plastisol we're gonna be using today. It's the Lure Works Porosol compound in the soft. So we're gonna pour probably about a cup of that uh, in a couple of colors so that we can make this bait look pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna heat it up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to start pouring. Here's the colorants we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using some Lure Works Black, Lure Works Brown. We're gonna be using a couple of different flakes Primarily just black and like a copper. This is the copper 0.025 hex. And this is a black uh, 0.062. This is like a string cut, so it's a longer cut flake. And then we have some black 0.025 hex there. Probably not gonna show too, too many steps of the next little part. I'm gonna kinda get it heated, mix up all the plastics, so I'll get it going. It's a little bit difficult to film this stuff um, and I don't wanna make this video too long. So if you guys want another video more in depth on how to pour your own soft plastics, feel free to comment that below. Quick disclaimer guys, please be careful when using Plastisol. Make sure you're wearing a respirator and some gloves. These aren't the best gloves ever, but they're better than nothing. Um, so please be careful. This stuff's really hot. We're heating it up to pretty high temperatures. You do not wanna burn yourself. So 
now that we have our plastic all mixed up, we're gonna just reheat it here real quick. We're gonna start with the black. We're gonna use that to try to pour towards the eyes. And we're also gonna give uh, a little bit of like a dribble of black throughout the bait so it'll look like it has kind of like black specks throughout it. And uh, after that, we're going to heat up the brown and we're gonna fill the rest of the bait using that brown color. We have our black plastisol nice and hot. And what we're gonna do, hope I can get this on film well. So we're just gonna kind of dribble black just a little bit. We don't want very much. This is just gonna give it that kind of goby look. We're just gonna give it a few dribbles throughout the different areas of the bait. That's probably good. You can see we dripped some black in there. You can even take it with your hands and kind of move it around. It's already cooled a little bit, but you can see that's kind of what it looks like right now. It's a bit of a mess, but uh, it's gonna look pretty cool, I think, when we're done. All right, our brown is now nice and hot. We're gonna give it a quick stir to make sure we get all that flake in there. Overheat it maybe a little bit, but it's okay. And now all we're gonna do is just fill the cavity of the bait. You can slowly pour it in there. It's hard to film this, I can't really see what I'm pouring. I think that's good right about there. Now, we wait. It's been probably about five minutes or so. We're gonna try to take it out now. You can see if we move it, it looks like the bait is pretty much uh, cured. It'll still be very soft when we pull it out. They take about 24 hours to fully cure. You just pull the tail open like that. You can kind of peel the bait out there. And there it is. Let me lay this out on my hand so you guys can get a good look at it. And that is our 100% homemade bait. I think it looks pretty cool. We're gonna mess around there and uh, play with the colors, do a couple of different pours and see what we can get the end uh, result to look like. So I'm gonna mess around here and I'll show you guys uh, the end result of some of the pours. We are just about done making all our baits, guys. It took a little while only using a single cavity. I don't recommend that. I definitely would make multiple cavities so it doesn't take quite so long. But uh, here's the finished result. We'll give you guys a little bit of a close up here so you can see what they look like. I think they turned out pretty wicked. We did some different pours, you can see that one. We did black on the bottom and on the top, so it's kind of sandwiched. Something different you don't really see out there. That's the cool thing about bait making, guys, is you can really do whatever you want. No one can tell you what's right or wrong. You can make the bait however you want. Now there's only one thing left to do. We're gonna fish them. So it's the next day, bright and early. It's about 8.15 a.m. I just put the bait on. I've got it sitting in the water right now. I'm out with my buddy, Devin. What's up, guys? <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're sitting in 45 feet of water. You can see there, we're gonna hopefully get a fish on uh, our homemade bait. So here's the rig. We're just running it on uh, one of those Berkley, I think they're called the half heads. Was black, but apparently all the paint wanted to chip off. And uh, that's what our rig looks like. I think it looks pretty solid. I'll give you a quick little view of what it looks like in the water too. Here's a quick little view of that bait in the water. You can see that tail has a nice bit of action. It darts a little bit from side to side if you uh, jig it and kind of leave it. I think these will do the trick for sure. They can't get the parts. Oh, there's a fish. Wait for him and then drop down. Fish. Fish um, on guys. Here we go. On the new bait. Let's see what we got. Feels like a whitey. I think you can pull the transducer out, Deb. Putting up a decent little fight. It's been a very tough day, yeah, but... It's a nice whitey. We got a white fish coming up. Launch your hook there on the edge. There it is, right in the mouth. been a tough go today. Look at that guys. There's that new bait right in that fish's mouth. He slurped it right up. Just like that guys, we put a whitey on the ice. It has been a pretty tough day to be honest. We haven't really marked too many fish so not a big one by any means but happy to get one. So as you guys can see, 
that's how you make your own bait. I uh, rigged it up on that Ned rig right there and uh, it got it done. You can make your own bait at home and smack some Simcoe Whiteys.